Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the Tolis Airbus A321 and today we're going to look at alternate law and stalling the Airbus. How we end up in that situation um, in an Airbus which is famously uh, in normal law not able to stall we hope and uh, we'll see how we can get out of it as well. I am a real world Airbus pilot so I'll be using that to hopefully give you some extra context to your home simulations but this is not for any real world use there are some limitations in the simulator and uh, so on that we will see. So let's get started. So we are back here in Northern Italy, having uh, just taken off from Milan Lanate Airport. And I just like to use this area to demonstrate it. We've got some uh, relatively nice scenery in front of us here. And in my previous video on what is the Airbus, we looked at normal law and the implications of that, the protections it offers us. So if you haven't seen that, I highly recommend it uh, to give you some idea of what we're going to talk about today. Um, but today we're going to look at how alternate law removes some of those protections and puts us into a more conventional aeroplane. So if we jump into the cockpit, we can see here we are up at 15,000 feet, 250 knots. So how do we know we're in normal law right now? Well, I've got these green uh, equal signs or eyebrows, some people call them. These are going to show me that I've got the protections in place. So if I take out the autopilot and try and bank past them, as we saw in my last video, my director's off, bird on. I can go full side stick left and the airplane will not go past those eyebrow signs. that's the maximum it will go to. So we have those protections available to us. We also have them in pitch, so I won't be able to get the nose down below 15 degrees or up above 30. We also have G protection, quite importantly. So in the Airbus, in normal law, I can pull the side stick full back and it will not over G and the real airplane would show you the G force down here. Sadly, the TOLIS does not yet show you that. So what happens if we end up in alternate law and how do we know? Well, alternate law is a version of uh, flight control law that you end up in when you have a systems failure of some kind. There's quite a few failures that can lead to it, so I won't go into them all now. We will talk about failures in other videos in the near future. So I'm going to artificially put myself into alternate law. So if we had a failure of uh, two of the ADR computers like that, uh, the airplane now loses its PFDs on both sides. Um, and we end up in alternate law and I can use the air data switching to use the third source, the third source I haven't turned off, ADR3, and I'm going to put that to my captain's side here. And you can see a few things have happened. I've gone into alternate law and how can I tell? Well, I've lost those green equal signs and that's the big giveaway. That tells us I'm in now in alternate law. And the reason they're crosses and they're down here as well on the pitch is because I no longer have protection. So if I was to bank the airplane now, I could bank it all the way past that protection, I can go below 15 degrees, above 30 degrees. It's much more conventional now. We've also got the thrust lock uh, FMA here because of the way I put it in. So I'm going to take control of the thrust. We've lost auto thrust effectively. So let's see if I could set that to something similar. I won't run through the ECAM, but we can see here flight control alternate law protections lost. It does tell me the protections have been lost. 320 knots is a maximum speed. Do not use the speed brake. I'm not entirely sure why it's saying that actually. That's interesting. But there we go. So I'm just going to clear that through, and if you look on the status page, also law, when landing get lever down, direct law, we'll talk about that later as well. So, what's different now? Well, as I said, we've lost those protections in the bank and pitch primarily. So if I was to just move the airplane like this, you'll see straight away I can go past the uh, 67 degrees bank limit. I can't over-G the airplane though. So still, I can pull full up and it will do 2.5G, and I can go full nose down, and it will do minus 1G. That's with the flaps up, so in clean configuration. Slightly different limits, 2G to 0G if you are with the flaps out. So that's pretty good. We still have G protection. We still also have auto trimming. So I'm going to increase the thrust now to toga, and you'll see that we don't pitch up. So that pitch power couple is still being accounted for by the fly-by-wire in the pitch sense. So in alternate law, the side stick in pitch still is only commanding a g-force and as I said if, if you're not sure what I'm talking about there uh, if you go to my normal law video I discuss that in a bit more detail so it, it's still going to trim for me as well you see it trimming forwards as we accelerate and it would do the same if I bring all the thrust off I would expect in a conventional airplane the nose would drop but because the Airbus accounts for that you'll see that it keeps me at 1g keeps me level flight so it's still pretty pretty good things have changed in roll though in normal law, in roll, you're commanding a rate of roll with a side stick. So a small rate of roll, a high rate of roll. And then when you let go, 
you're commanding zero roll rate, so the airplane will hold the bank you're at. But you can see in normal, uh, sorry, in alternate law, it's slightly different. I'm directly commanding the ailerons now, so it is directly related to the side stick. So if I was to put it to 45 degrees, it'll stay roughly there. It may move a bit, but it's still certainly more sensitive, and you can feel that even in the uh, the tow list. If I show you, you can see the side stick there moving. It's quite quite quick, quite a rapid reaction. If we go to our wing view, you'll see now that I can just hold that. And unlike in normal law, where the controls would adjust for the rate, they just go to exactly where I set them and they stay there. So that's uh, some of the, the protections that we've lost. Something I'd like to show you in alternate law to demonstrate this uh, point about the roll is if I use asymmetric thrust, you'll see that the airplane actually rolls because it's not in any it's not trying to maintain a bank angle now it's just got the flight control set to neutral so you can see there it's possible to fly it using asymmetric thrust because in normal law this wouldn't work the airplane would account for it and keep me at the bank angle i've set now i can reduce the right engine and you'll see that the asymmetric thrust causes the airplane to bank so that demonstrates the point that we're now very much in a direct roll uh, situation. And once they're together, back to uh, some sort of stability. So let's talk about low speed. In normal law, we saw how the Airbus protects us in low speed by lowering the nose if we slow down too much. And eventually, even if I pull full back on the side stick, it will not let me stall. It will keep lowering the nose or apply thrust and raise the nose. Now we're in alternate law, we're going to see that that's not quite the case. As we slow down, this time the airplane will let us go through VLS as it normally would. And remember we're flying without any automatics here, no auto thrust. And then instead of having alpha prot and alpha max, we now just have VLS here. And then the top of this red bar is the V stall warner. Now it's not perfectly accurate because if I was to apply G to the airplane, you'll see that that increases. And that's true in the real airplane as well. So we're still auto trimming and the airplane trims back for us as we slow down. So it's still very easy to fly. And what we'll see is that as we get back into VLS, we'll see if there's any protection for us. And yes, you can see that the airplane is lowering the nose. So this now is a stability, not a protection. So I could override that. If I pull back on the side stick now, it will do as I say. And we'll talk about stalling in a minute but there is stability, so the airplane is trying to lower the nose. Now there are certain versions of alternate law where that will not happen. So in this particular version of alternate law, we have that stability, but sometimes with some failures that may not be there. The other thing to note is that it's very possible if you're busy flying and you'll be moving the side stick as you, as you fly around, uh, say you're flying visually, it'd be very possible to pull back on the side stick and not realize that stability is there because you can completely override it and stall the airplane um, just like you could in the conventional airplane. So although there's some stability, it either might not be there or you might ignore it because you don't realize there's no feedback directly to the side stick on it. All you'd notice is perhaps you're pulling back slightly more. Let's have a look at the high speed end. So now here we are accelerating and you'll see that at this speed it's more sensitive in roll because there's more air over the controls and now we reach into overspeed and the airplane gradually pitches up for us again it will let you overspeed quite happily <laughs> um, but it does pitch up even in normal law you'll still end up overspeeding slightly but the difference in alternate law i can push the nose right down and, and overspeed to a uh, you know to a point where the airplane is um not very structurally safe so you gotta be very careful we just don't have the protections just some stability and that's why the status page tells us protections lost they aren't there anymore right let's have a look at what stalling would look like in the airbus so what is stalling well stalling is going to be when we exceed the angle of attack where the wing can generate lift the angle of attack is going to be the difference between the airflow and our wing uh, hitting the air if it goes too high the air cannot stay attached to the wing, it separates uh, and you end up with just sort of turbulent air on top of the wing instead of the normal laminar flow that gives us our lift. And as a result, the wing loses lift and we will not be able to fly in the air and we have to do our recovery. 
we're pretty used on the Airbus to having normal law protections, so stalling is not something that uh, the Airbus is famous for doing. But it is entirely possible, and in alternate law, it's very important that you're aware of the risks of ending up in a stall situation and what you might do about it. So let's talk about what we would do. It's a memory item for Airbus pilots. We have to know what to do in the event of a stall uh, from memory straight away, because it's obviously a very critical part of flying. So the first thing we're going to do if we uh, end up in a stall is, well, we need to be able to recognize it, and we need to announce that we've recognized it. So if you hear the stall warner going, or if you sense other things like buffet, uh, that sort of thing, buffet would be that turbulent air hitting the tailplane, things like that, then you're going to say stall, I have control. It's important we say who has control because on the Airbus, unlike a conventional airliner like the 737, we have a side stick on each side. There's one for me and there's one for the FO. And if we were to uh, not realize that the other person was making an input, the Airbus actually adds them. So if this side stick was full forward and this side stick was full back, the net result would be zero and the plane would carry on with uh, 1G as we've seen before. So very important that we uh, acknowledge that we are going to take over. Next, we are going to lower the nose, and that's the main part of recovering from the stall in an Airbus. We need to lower the nose to reduce the angle of attack and keep the airplane flying. In some uh, smaller airplanes, you'll also add thrust at the same time, but we don't do that. We just need to get that nose lowered, and that's how we're going to recover from the stall, because we get the angle of attack down and the airplane will keep flying. If you can't get the nose down, which could be because of a malfunction of trim or the thrust is too high, things like that, well, maybe you need to reduce the thrust to help get that nose down. But you can use full nose down side stick if you have to, but it's unlikely in this situation, which we'll see today. Once you've done that, you're going to get the wings to level because it's best for the recovery if we have our wings level. If you're in a turn, that increases the angle of attack and makes things more difficult for recovery. So we've done two things, basically. We've said stall I have control and we've lowered the nose maybe leveled the wings. Once we get out of the stall, so when we get rid of that indication, so the stall warner or the buffet, so if we no longer think we're in the stall, then we need to start smoothly increasing the thrust. We don't need to go straight to toga. I know earlier I was showing you how there's no pitch power couple even in alternate law, but if we go straight to toga whilst we're in the stall warner range, it is possible that the airplane will pitch up slightly. Certainly you'll have the risk of increasing the angle of attack and re-entering the stall. So a smooth increase of thrust. We then need to check the speed brakes are retracted because it's possible they'd still be out. Um, we're not going to toga thrust, so you need to check they're uh, retracted. You might have ended up in a stall from a loss of situational awareness, so it's quite important that you uh, check these things. Once the speed brakes are definitely checked retracted, we'll recover our flight path smoothly. We don't need to pull straight back up aggressively or we'll end up in another stall. So a smooth recovery to our level flight or whatever flight path we need. If we're below 20,000 feet, at this point we'll put out flap 1. Flap 1 will just give us the slats, and the slats are key to allowing our angle of attack to be higher. So by entering the stall, we've clearly entered a high angle of attack situation. The slats allow the wing to produce lift at an even higher angle of attack. They, they give more energy into that airflow. They don't provide much lift on their own, but they increase the overall amount of lift we can get from the wing because we can fly at a higher angle of attack. So that's uh, pretty much the procedure. The flaps are limited to 20,000 feet, so if you're above 20,000 feet, you won't do that. You also have to be careful. If you've lowered the nose too much, you could be accelerating over the flap limit speed, in which case you won't be able to get the flaps out in time. If whilst you're doing this, the airplane stalls again, which is very possible in the real airplane, um, it's very sensitive, then you just start again. Stall I have control, lower the nose, level the wings, smoothly increase the thrust when you're out of the stall check the speed brakes are retracted and recover the flight path. Right, let's have a look at our first go. So I'm just going to increase the audio so that you can hear the stall warner go. So I'm reducing the thrust to idle. Then I'm back at idle. I'm going to bring up the ND so you can just see what I'm commanding there. Put that over there. Now, the airplane is going to pitch down, so I'm now starting to pull back on the side stick as if we've lost situational awareness. And I have to keep pulling back slightly just to keep the nose from dropping because we saw that stability earlier that will actually lower the nose for us. So I keep pulling back, keep pulling back. Angle of attack's increasing. I'm now past 7.5 degrees angle of attack. You can see that on the PFD. And eventually we will get stall warner. So stall I have control, 
Lower the nose. Wings are level. Slowly increasing the thrust now. Not putting back too early. Starting to raise the nose. Speed brakes are retracted. Below 20,000 feet. Flaps to one. And smoothly recovering to level flight. And now we can increase the thrust a bit more. And there we go. You can see that now flap one is out. That uh, indication is way down there. VLS has gone a long way away because of these slats. They make a huge difference to the angle attack you can use the wing for. As you can see them there. So they allow the airflow to come in underneath and then stick to the surface for a bit longer. Right, let's have another look at that. So in this clip we're going to see uh, another stall that leads into a secondary stall. So uh, I won't have uh, my audio live in the simulator, this is just me talking to you separately. But what you'll see is that we simply reapply the action. So you'd say if you had another pilot with you stall to have control, you're going to put the nose down uh, and start from there right from the beginning. I'm also showing you the side stick position here so you can just see the inputs uh, I make. What I will say about the TOLIS is it seems more sensitive, so the pitch down is probably more pitch down than I would expect to get uh, from the real aeroplane with the amount of input I put onto the side stick. So there we go, pitch down, we're trying to recover but I pull back too fast and you see this here, that's too much and we stall again. So put the nose down again, but like I say, it's slightly more responsive than I uh, would um, expect from the, the real simulators that we, we try this in. Also, it's much easier in the real simulator to get that secondary stall. So as I'm pulling back, I had to actually work quite hard to trigger it there, whereas in the real aeroplane or the real simulators, uh, you can actually almost do nothing and you'll find that the aeroplane will try and restall as the thrust comes on. So you have to keep uh, that nose under control, stop it from rising too fast. In this clip, I wanted to demonstrate that you can stall at, at much higher speeds. It's just down to the angle of attack, so we don't have to be slow. So here we go at 280 knots by pulling back Increasing the angle of attack, we get the stall warner, uh, and then we use the recovery as, as usual. So you don't have to be in the situation I've shown before. It's impossible to enter a stall at uh, any speed, just based on your angle of attack. We don't land the Airbus in alternate law. We don't take off the Airbus in alternate law either. For takeoff, you would, wouldn't dispatch. There would be a reason to go back and get engineering to look at it. It's a law that we end up in, in flight because of downgrades, the problems of the aeroplane. Once we put the gear out, we'll be in direct law, which is something I'll talk about in my next video. So there'll be a, a part three where we'll look at uh, landing the airplane from this situation. So if we've ended up in alternate law, how that is different, how we might go around, how that is different, uh, and also mechanical backup, which will be if we have uh, none of the flight controls working except the rudder. So those videos are to come. If you'd like to see those, um, feel free to subscribe to the channel. They'll be coming out in the, the near future. That's it for today's video on alternate law and stalling. I hope it's been of interest and useful for you. As I said, not for any real world use, but uh, shows us how advanced this TOLIS model is. They've done a great job, I think. My only uh, thoughts would be that the stall recovery is probably a little bit more difficult in the real airplane because it's easier to get that secondary stall. As always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, feel free to leave any comments uh, and questions in the, the comment section and I'll try and get back to them. There'll be more videos coming out, more streams in the future. Thank you all for your continued support and see you again in another video soon.